Hey guys, uh, Mr. Burns here again, bringing you another math video. Uh, in this one, I'm going to talk about a pretty complex topic, which is uh, maximum revenue pro uh, problems that involve quadratics. So uh, if you like this video, if it helps you in any way, share it. Maybe it could help somebody else. Uh, like, share, subscribe. If you got any questions, guys, feel free to drop me a comment. Or if you like this video, if it helped you in some way, also drop me a comment. I love hearing from people in different parts of the world because my own students never watch my videos. All right, so uh, quadratic revenue problems. First thing that you need to recognize when you're doing one of these questions is does it ask for max? So if it says max, greatest, least, minimum, that basically gives you a hint is that you're looking for the vertex. So with every single quadratic question, you're, you're always in a battle of do I look find the vertex or do I find the x-intercept? So if it says max, uh, greatest, least, minimum, things like that, you want to find the vertex. The best way to find the vertex is using the axis of symmetry formula. x is equal to negative b over 2a. That is by far the best way to find it. So let's go ahead and look at a couple. I got three different examples here um, of varying difficulty levels. And let's have a look and see how we try them, how, how they go. All right, so let's, let me read the question to you, and then uh, let's pick some sense from it. So Joe is selling tickets on a boat tour around the Bay of Islands, my home. If he charges $30, he will sell 50 tickets. For every $1 decrease in price, five more people join the excursion. What is the price that will maximize revenue? So... I always start with a very simple formula for this, and that is that revenue is equal to the number of things you sell, so the number sold, times uh, the price of whatever it is. So that's that's revenue at its heart. Of course, it gets way more complicated than that, um, but you know it is what it is. So what we have here is a situation where we want to create two linear equations. So one for the number of tickets sold, the other one for the price of the tickets. So if he looks here, it says he, he'll sell 50 tickets if he charges 30 bucks. So he starts with 50 tickets. So for every uh, $1 price increase or decrease, he sells five more tickets. So let's first of all, let's say N is the number of $1 price decreases. So for example... If he drops his price down to twenty-nine dollars, fifty-five people go. So we need a linear equation that's going to match that situation. So the linear equation that'll match that situation is going to be fifty plus five n. So let's, for example, if he if he drops the price one dollar, so n is one, then he has fifty-five people going. If he drops it two down to twenty-eight bucks, then he has sixty. So five times two is ten plus fifty is sixty. So the price that he has. So he starts with 30 and he decreases it $1 um, each time. So it's going to be 30 minus n. So if n is 1, it's 29. If n is 2, it's 28, so on and so forth. So this is my quadratic equation right here. So that is the quadratic equation. Now it's not in the form that we would like it to be in. We would like it to be in um, you know, ax squared plus bx plus um, plus bx, that's not an x, that's a 2, plus bx plus c. That's the form that we would like it to be in. So all we have to do is foil this out. So let's go ahead and do it. So 50 times, so first outside, inside, last, so 50 times 30. So that's 150. So 150. First outside, so that's negative 50 in. Inside, 150 Actually, this should be 1,500, shouldn't it? Two zeros. 150n, and then minus 5n squared. <clears throat> now I'll just rearrange and do the math. So I'm going to put the n squared first, so negative 5n squared. That's going to be plus 150n, and then plus 1,500. So I just combine my two middle terms there, and, you know, as simple as that, 5 times 30. I'm just doing a quick check on my mental math. I don't want to mess this up here on video. All right, so there it is. So that's my revenue equation. So what I need to do now is just do a quick mental check. This is a maximum question. You see max is revenue, so that tells me I need to find the vertex. So, <clears throat> excuse me. 
So in order to find the vertex, I want to use the formula x is equal to negative b over 2a, and in my case, n is equal to negative b over 2a. So n being the number of price increases. So n is equal to negative 100 divided by 2 times negative 5. And that's going to leave me with uh, negative 100 divided by negative 10, which is 10. So he's going to have to make 10 price decreases. I kept keep saying increases. So 10 price decreases. So basically his price is going to be, so I'll go back to my price equation, which is 30 minus n. So 30 minus 10, which is 20. If I want to find the, the revenue, or sorry, the number sold, uh, the number sold would be five, 50 plus 5 times 10. So he's going to sell 100 tickets now. And then his revenue, if I wanted to find it, I have two options. Um, I have two options. I can take this 10 and go back, or this 10, and go back in here, sub it in here, and that gives you a revenue. Really, my vertex for this situation is the number of price increases and the revenue, NR. But again, I don't have to do that. I can just go 20 times 1,000. That's going to give me 20,000. So that's how much money he's going to make. So I should be in the boat tour business, not the math-making video business. All right, guys, so that's a good example of um, a question like this. Uh, you got, you know, I think that for the most part, this formula will never fail you uh, for most of the examples that I've seen anyway. Let's do two more. So this one's a little more uh, convoluted, I'll say. Uh, fruit grower has 400 crates of grapes ready for market and will have 20 more crates each day the shipment is delayed. The present price is $60 per crate. However, for each day shipment is delayed, the price decreases by $2. So this is right quadratic formula, yada, yada, yada. We want to ma find the max revenue, basically. All right, so let's pick out what we got going on here. So we start with um, the revenue is equal to the number sold times the price. So if you look here, let's start with the number sold. So the number sold is going to be 400 plus for each day the shipment is delayed. Um, so 20 every single day. So N, in this case, is going to be the number of days delayed. So we could also call it the number of price decreases because really they correspond to be the same thing. So $2 price decreases. So if I look here, it's going to be 400 plus additional 20 for every single day the shipment is delayed. Now the price starts at 60, but then it's decreasing for $2 every single day the shipment is delayed. So it's going to be minus so 60 minus the 2n this time. So that's all you want to do, guys, is try to make two linear equations that we need to multiply together. So let's go ahead and uh, do some math on this. So 400, so again, I'm going to foil this out to get my, so technically this would be your quadratic equation. That works, but we need to find a, the vertex of it. So it's easier to find the vertex if we, um, you know, through other means. So let's go ahead now and actually um, foil this out. So we got 400 times 60, 400 times 60. I'm not messing this up. So 24,000. Yep. 24,000 plus. So that's first outside. So minus 800 and inside plus 1,200 n and then minus 40 n squared. So that's going to be negative 40 n squared. So do the math in here. So that's plus 400 n plus 2400. So again, I want to find the vertex, so I'll use n is equal to negative b over 2a. So my n value is going to be negative 400. 400 divided by 2 times negative 40. So 400 divided by 80 gives me 5. So the number of days that they're going to delay this shipment is 5 days. So I want to find the max revenue, so in order to do that, I just need to sub 5 into both of these equations. So my number sold is going to be 400 plus 
20 times 5, which is 100. Or, sorry, 500. So 400 plus 100. That's where I was getting that from. And then the price is going to be 60 minus 2 times 5, which is 50. So then we'll have $25,000. There it is, guys. So that's another example of a max revenue question. This one a little bit more complicated, but again, um, you know, it's one of those things. Not that it's not that complicated for you guys, but uh, still, it's not it's not easy by any means. All right, let me just I'm just checking something here. All right, there we go. Last question. So it says this is another max revenue question. You can see maximum profit. A takeout average is 200 customers per day who spend $30 per meal. The owner estimates a loss of 10 customers per day for each $1 increase in meal. If the average cost of a pair each meal is $12, uh, write, and write a quadratic function to model the daily profit and use it to determine the meal price that will maximize the function. So we got a little bit going on here, a little bit more going on here than uh, a, a particular you know, uh, equation. Because so, we got this cost prepared meal involved here. So let's look at, again, start with our revenue, which is the number sold times uh, the price. So the revenue, even though in this case price is 30 bucks, the revenue that we're going to get from this is going to be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and write uh, the number sold first. Let's think about the number of sold. So N is going to be the price increases. So number of price increases. So we have to think about this $12 for each meal. So, so the number sold is going to be 200. And he's increasing the price. So he's going to lose 10 customers per day. So 10 minus the number of uh, price increases. So $1, he loses 10 $2, he loses 20 so on and so forth. Now the price is going to be $30, and he's going to be increasing it in amount. Okay, so that's the price of the meal. Now the only thing we have to consider is that it takes him um, twelve dollars. He spends twelve dollars on every single meal that he has to make. So, if this, if this is actually going to be the number sold, we actually have to subtract twelve from this because um, that will determine how much he's actually going to make for each meal. Okay, so subtracting that twelve dollars, we really could subtract it from the thirty because that's what's important. All right, so we have this: so two hundred. Minus 100N, and that's going to be, um, let me see, what's that? 18 plus N. <clears throat> just give me one second, guys. I'm just going to get a drink for one second. Sorry about the delay there, guys. I know for you guys it wasn't much of a delay, but I was gone for a couple minutes. All right, so let me let me continue with this question. Get full screen again. Um, so, yeah, so let me just recap. We're here. We subtracted the 12 off this because we had, you know, really we want price is not, it's kind of a misnomer. It's really the, the profit that you make. And the other ones, we didn't have any loss. So we're losing 12 bucks for each meal. So we want to subtract the 12 off the 30. And that gives us 18. So now we want, me to do, we want to foil this out. So we're going to have 200 times 18, which is going to be 3,600. So 3,600. So first, outside, so 200 in. 200 in. And then inside, negative 180 in. And then last, negative 10, 10 in squared. So we'll take care of the inside. So negative 10 in squared plus 20 in plus 3,600. Again, we want to find the number of price increases. So we want to find n is equal to negative b over 2a. So we want to have n is equal to negative 20 divided by 2 times negative 10. So that's going to be one price increase is going to do it. <clears throat> so that means that the number sold is going to be um, 190. So I'll just subtract off 10. And the price 
or the price the price will actually be thirty one dollars but we need to remember that we're going to subtract off twelve from that for the actual profit per meal so the profit per meal would actually be nineteen dollars so we want the revenue 190 uh, times nineteen dollars and that'll give us the price that he makes a day 190 times nineteen dollars so three thousand six hundred and ten there it is guys I hope this helps uh, I know this can be kind of a complicated question now I'm gonna give you a little piece of advice um, when you're doing a question like this you don't always have to go to this guy so I'll show you this right now and I don't usually show my students this because I want them to do this way but if you're ever stuck you don't remember how to do this uh, this way kinda helps if you find this is already fact in factored form so if you actually set these equal to zero and find the y intercept x intercepts from them so if I go 200 minus 10 n is equal to zero so that means that n is equal to basically 200 divided by 10 or 20 and for this one it'll just be n is equal to negative 18 if you take these two then go 20 plus <coughs> negative 18 divided by 2 that gives you negative 2 divided by or sorry positive 2 divided by 2 gives you 1 so that will actually give you your n value of your vertex if you find your 2x intercepts and then just add them up divide by 2 um, a great way of doing a question like this but uh, not always the best way because I know a lot of teachers are going to want you to get this guy. All right, guys. I hope this video helps. Like, share, subscribe. If you got any questions, comment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in class.